I'm just going to show you the custom functions I use on the Canon 5D Mark I Classic. So if you go into your menu and scroll up, rather than scrolling all the way through the menu, if you just scroll up, you can get to custom functions pretty quickly. And then click set. I actually define the set button of my camera to change the picture style. And the default is actually on zero, which gives it no function at all. So the set button um, you might find when you get straight into the custom functions, that's set to zero. So I set that one to change picture style. The reason I do that is because otherwise you've got to go all the way through the menu to try and find picture style every time. Um, and I work in black and white and I've done a recent video about this. So take a look at that one. Um, and you're scrolling through this and you're trying to find it. So I decided to make the set button so I can go straight to the picture styles. Click menu again, we'll go to custom functions. So that's it, it's number two and that makes it change picture style. Long exposure noise reduction, the options there I'd have it off completely. So any exposures over one second, um, there won't be any noise reduction, any special um, processing taking place. Or you can have it in auto noise reduction, any exposures over one second will then... The camera actually takes two images then, it takes a long time, but it, what it's trying to do is get rid of the noise. Um, when you go over one second with the digital camera, this is one problem as you do get noise. Um, I just have mine set to on, so it's taking care of that and doing the best it can do, leave it up to the camera. So long exposure, noise reduction, number two, set to on. Flash sync speed in AV mode is, is not really relevant to me because I work manual mode for 100% of what I do. If you are in AV and use an aperture priority, um, what you can do you can fix it at one two hundredth of a second not something that i can see you using that much um, so i'm just going to leave that at auto um, i don't use av mode but that's something to look at as i say if you're using aperture priority a lot and um, this is you know i'm going to do a separate video about this one actually because you've got to really think about how you're using the camera I use the focus and recompose method. In other words, the shutter, I half press and then I recompose the image and then I fully depress the shutter. The back button um, focusing, I don't actually use that much. Maybe I'll change now. I'm going back to landscape a bit. But um, once you learn a way of doing something, you don't generally change. And it's the quickest way of working for me at weddings. Um, it's almost like programmed into my body to do focus, recompose, take the photos. So, so that's what I do. But as I say, this one is where you can make the back button. The shutter is the AF at the moment. And the AE lock is actually the star on the back of the camera. Um, look at the next video. We'll go into this in depth, actually, because you've got to get this right. Or you can um, change it completely. And so you can have the shutter not working. So the AF is on the back button. Um, but I think we'll leave that one there for now. But just so that you know, if you're using focus recompose, you want that set to zero. On to the next one. The AF assist beam, um, I always have a mitt in because obviously I'm working in dark environments, um, but you can, you, you can switch that off. Um, but I have that on. Number six, exposure level increments. I work in a third of a stop increments, but if you do work in halves, then this is where you can change it. But I work in thirds. So that just sets, sets your camera up so um, you know where you are working in a third of a stops. Flash obviously fires, um, but you can switch it off in here. Don't really suggest doing that. It's easier just to do it on the on the flash, obviously, because this could confuse you if you suddenly need flash. So I always have it firing. 
ISO expansion. That if you find when you got your 5D that it will only go up to 1600 ISO, and I'm talking about 3200 quite a bit, it's because this is set to off. The ISO expansion just gives you that 3200 ISO. So obviously for me, that's switched on all the time. The bracket sequence, um, if you're getting into bracketing, again, we'll look at that. Um, you can take them in different sequences and, and that's worth looking at if you're bracketing. So if you're doing landscapes and you're wanting to produce a few images, a plus and minus and an average one, um, you want to come into here and what it's doing is just changing the sequence for you so you can start off with the average start off with the minus then the normal then the light one you know and that's just disabling it or enabling it so have a look at that I just generally leave it at zero to be honest with you so it takes the average one first then the minus then the plus superimposed image is always set to zero menu button display position is to previous now what that does and you have to be a bit careful on this one um, I'll show you that while I'm here if you have it set to previous say you switch the camera off and switch it back on again if you click the menu now it will always go back to where it was before obviously and that's what it means but imagine if you had it set to format and you're working and you switch the camera off you switch it back on again and you're working and in your bag it suddenly touched the menu button but you're only one step away from deleting all your photos you only have to go set in your pocket or in your bag and it's you could easily lose all your images so a big tip on this one is to think about how you're working and what you're doing um, you can change it to top Or previous top if power off so let's go show you what top is so you could change it to that so when you switch your camera off and say it's switched on again and you put chucked it in your bag and you're moving on if accidentally the menu button was pressed well it's always going to go back to the top of the menu the worst that's going to happen is you're going to change the quality and again is that ideal well if it's a choice between the two, then I'll just go for this one, to be honest, because the chances of it moving around and changing your quality are probably less than if it had gone to something like format and deleted. It could be a holiday's worth of images, couldn't it? So that's a big tip, that one. We'll go back to custom functions. So that was custom function number 11. You can have it to go to top or previous. Now you're thinking, I've just told you that, why have I got it on previous? There is a very good reason. What I do before a wedding is I keep it on previous and that's set forever. I'll just click menu. What I do is actually put it highlighting the time. So I know that if the camera's switched off, and I don't use a watch and I don't like looking at my phone all the time. So I know my menu button it goes straight to the time and I know exactly where I am at the wedding that's just you know you find these things you're working around because of bad experiences and you suddenly find these little tiny things in cameras that can help you so that's a big tip I leave it on previous and I just highlight before I start the wedding I just put it over the time it's quite a long way away from format um, and you know, I just find that's, that's working fine. So that just gives you a bit of a tip. Just go down to, lost myself, here we go. So on 11, menu button, display position, and I put it to previous. Mirror lockup disable. So this is where you, if you're in the landscape, you're using long shutters or you're inside a church. You know, if it's flipping that mirror up, they're quite big mirrors in the 5D Mark One. I. I mean, as you've gone on to the 5D Mark IV, they've sorted this out. Um, so mirror slap is, you know, it's a very quiet camera in the 5D Mark IV. Um, but this is where you can lock up your mirror and stop vibration. So we'll just enable that. 
I bet we can't focus. Now I'll just put on manual focus. So it's flipped the mirror up and then it will take the exposure. That gives you an idea what's going on there. Let's just switch it off. Let's go back to the menu. So mirror lockup, again, you know, is something that you'll probably get into. It's just something that SLRs obviously have got this big mirror and it does help you get sharper images. So I've got that disabled the majority of the time because I'm doing weddings, but I will use it a little bit when I'm out and about doing landscape. AF point selection method normal. That's fine for me, but you can have the multi-controller. Um, quick control, you know. I use the center point, you know, and that's what I'm showing you is exactly what I do. The center point focus, um, so the little square in the center, when you're focusing is cross type. So what that means is it's a lot more sensitive and it just picks up horizontal and vertical lines. So the chances are when I'm pointing at a bride or a groom that it's just easier to focus. I don't use any of the points that are around on the 5D Mark I apart from the center one. Center one's the only one I use. And again, this has been massively improved in the Mark III, IV. Um, but you've got a 5D Mark I, so, you know, don't worry about it too much. Focus, recompose, centre focus point. It's kept me good for 13 years, or well, you say you should be fine. So AF point selection method normal. What that means is when you, um, when you half press your shutter, use the centre point, and that's the end of that. Now ETTL2, evaluative, this is something you want to play around with, to be honest, if you're in the flash photography. I've, I've learned over the years that these cameras, to be honest with you, if you're at the point where you're using ETTL, it's just a full auto flash function. If you're in that position where you're using it, with me, the only time I really use it now is when the bride and groom turn around and they're going to run at me down the aisle and at that point, manual flash goes out the window and I just flick it over to ETTL, um, ETTL, and, and that's the end of that. When it's saying evaluative, what it's doing is really evaluating the whole scene. You could argue for Brian's groom, and I have tried this, the average is really when it's using more of the center of the image. So if I'm pointing it down the aisle, you could argue I'll get better flash exposures when I've got an average. Um, it's because it's using the center of the image. But evaluative means it's using the whole scene. So either way, to be honest with you, I haven't found much difference. So it's not a big one, really. So just, just have a play. You've got, I mean, these are only my settings. You've got to have a play around, really. Second curtain's very useful. Um, again, Google that one. We might do something on that at some stage. But it's when you're using flash and you want to show the streaks behind the main subject. So imagine a runner's moving in left to right and you want the streaks to be on the left. And you'll know what I mean if you're into flash photography. And um, this is where you set it up. So first curtain or second curtain. I'm always second curtain because I know this flash technique. So again, that's probably another video, but second curtain. Safety shift, AV, TV, you know, I know I'm whizzing over all these and I expect 90% of you are AV photographers. Um, I'll try and drag you over to the dark side of manual mode as quickly as I can over the next few years. Um, it's a much better place to be, to be honest. But AV, TV, safety shift, it doesn't affect me, so I don't really do much with that. The activation area, expanded or standard, that's worth looking at. So the standard um, really means it's just using the center point. Well, it's actually got, which you can't see, and this is, again, these tiny little things that people don't know. Around that center point, it's actually got an active area, um, an expanded area. And this is, this is really useful for autofocus for me. If, say, the bride and groom decide they'd like to do a walk and they were coming back up a a road and they started to decide to do a run or whatever you know move a bit faster 
If I put it into AI Servo um, and it's tracking them, this expanded does help a lot. And I found by leaving it expanded, it just helps the autofocus system, gives you more chance of capturing that image. I know these cameras aren't designed for someone else. Someone commented recently that uh, 5D Mark One is ideal for weddings, but what about bird photography and all these different things? I mean, you're right. This this camera is perfect for what I do. Um, and just think about that before you buy one. Buy the camera that does what you need. If you're into bird photography and this sort of thing, you want to spend more money on your autofocus systems. You want to be looking at, to be honest, the 1DXs and um, the D5s. So this is this has got a... <laughs> This has got an autofocus system that works perfectly for me. And if you're doing weddings, portraits, slow moving, kids running at you, not so great, to be honest. You want to you try and go up a little bit and get a better autofocus system. This is something to remember when you work out what you actually enjoy doing and then buy the camera for that. But the expanded does help. It does help. So I've got that on. Custom function 18. I always have set to zero and that's the end of that. I'm going to whiz through these now. Lens AF stop doesn't affect me. I haven't got the lens that will allow you to do that. Again, in an autofocus video, we'll go into that a bit more, I think. I'll see if I can do another one in the future. So don't worry too much about the chances about of you having that lens with this body at this time in 2018, to be honest with you, if you're buying that sort of lens, you're going to have a much better um, autofocus system in a modern camera. So don't worry about that one too much. And that one's to off, original decision data. And the focusing screen is the EEA, just to let you know, and this is something worth looking at, is the other focusing screens for the 5D Mark I that are available. If you like Zeiss lenses, manual focus Zeiss lenses, and you want a nice street camera so you can manually focus, um, you can get the focusing screen for this, and it's pretty good. It darkens the image slightly. Um, but again, 15 years ago, that's, that's what a lot of people were doing. So have a look at that. You can buy the different focusing screens, still available. Obviously, I'm on zero because I just use autofocus. My eyes aren't that great anymore. So I swear by autofocus. And just just talking about autofocus for the last time, we're at the end of the custom functions now. I will do another video. And up to a point, this camera does everything I need it to do. Would I use this camera if I was a sports photographer? No, I wouldn't. So don't expect too much of it for landscapes portraiture weddings you know that makes up a hundred percent of what i do so i don't do sports photography i'm not trying to get in a formula one car coming around a corner at the moment if i was then i'd buy a different camera so i hope this helps anyway um if you want to subscribe as i've said before make sure you click on the bell because else you're not really subscribed it's a bit of a strange system um, subscribe to me means that when I put something up you'll know about it and you need to click on the bell so so do that Instagram is at Rich Barley Richard Barley photography.com is a website I'll try and put all these links together now so what I'm mainly going to be doing is putting images up from now on on Instagram as I take them so that you can review them I might be doing some high res downloads. We'll see how we go this year if we've got enough time. Um, I'm going to be testing a lot of new cameras, hopefully. I'm trying to get hold of a 6D Mark II. If you've got a 6D Mark II or any of the, the cameras that you can send me to review, if you're a higher center or anything, um, get in contact because um, I'm sure you'd like to get some sponsorship on these videos. Hope that helps. Um, and have a good day. Bye-bye.